and welcome back everybody to Super Metroid Melancholia and the Land of Slowdown. That's weird, I don't remember seeing that. Anyway, we are back in this wonderful item collecting place where the halts run free and bugs come out of the pipes. I don't even know where I was going with that, but it sounded good. Oh yeah, another little change. Power bombs show off the blocks that... Oh, that's how you get this thing. This guy breaks stuff. Uh, power bombs show off blocks that... The um, properties of the blocks, so... For instance, a super missile block. It shows up as super missile because I laid a power bomb. That's a nice little thing, and hi. Using enemies... Oh, there's something over here. But using enemies to break blocks is actually a really... nice little way to uh, surprise people sometimes. I know we've been doing that for a while with... like when DSO and I started with again. He did that with the Metroids in the wreck ship area. <laughs> because he would put them in walls, do a block over top of them, and it's no big deal. Fold down the shaft a little bit, and then a Metroid pops out of the wall at you. Which you were not expecting at all. It's quite a valuable little. Well, maybe not valuable, but it's an experience, to put it that way. Especially when he has you play it for no real reason other than to see what happens when you find it. Yes, enemy breakable locks. Very good stuff. You can use it to great effect on some things. Oh, hey, and ice beam. It's just right there. Right in your way. I don't know why that's... Oh, yeah, and you need gravity suit coming up here, so here, have gravity suit. <laughs> I mean, it's something sort of silly and ridiculous like that that I like about the hack, but it's also that that kind of takes away from it. Because the only exploration is going through these rooms the first time, really. There's... You easily collect everything you need. So it's... None of these tubes break, okay. I just had to make sure. I don't trust Meridian tubes. Or noob tubes, I guess they're called. And Metroids. So yeah, underwater and Metroids. So it gives you ice gravity. Or you can not be here, that's fine with me. Now, I am not sure why, but the Metroid, for whatever reason, the Metroid AI, yes, there's all kinds of hidden stuff in this room too. Like Metroids, if you don't have the move off screen, they won't, obviously. But if you lay a power bomb, like this guy here, that was amazing. This. If you lay a power bomb, Metroids will move while the power bomb has gone off. It kind of like sets them to move off screen, and that's spiky. Oh, nice. That's a thing I don't want to mess with. I don't know why the game does that. I don't know if there's a particular reason or whatever for that. It's, it's strange to me. So. Then again, I don't know too much about programming or this game that much, so. Oh, yes, and wonderful square tag. Guess what? It makes going to this easier. So, here. <laughs> At least the hack is consistent with that. That might sort of kind of make up for the not as consistent with the high Metroid, with the uh, visual style. So I wanted to cover all the areas, so Steady made 
how the item progression works for very consistent. No, okay. Here we have another little path up top. And get some more missiles. Because we there's no way we had enough. And then lots and lots of crumble blocks. But yeah, I don't understand why the Metroids do that. It's very... Oh yeah. <laughs> Plasma beam. Why not? No, it just seems weird that when the power bomb goes off, the Metroids start moving again. Because power bombs already lag the game a lot. And so, to make matters worse, the game starts running these enemies off screen. Which does not help the lag at all, as you could imagine. That's seems very counterintuitive. And there's a lot of lag in this room. And I've had this discussion with a person before. Like lag is And there's a missile back here. Like I don't mind it so much, it's not terrible. Like lag actually kind of helps. In some instances, not all of them, but if you're trying to pull a little tricky thing off and fish our immune to screw attack, then lag doesn't help. But otherwise normal stuff, it's almost like slow down. So you get to do things maybe a little more precise or you have more time to think about it anyway. But to some people lag is super annoying, so yeah. and it's up here. The lag is most often caused by enemies, obviously. And most likely and there was a crab coming out of this wall. And a fish. That's most likely from not just enemies on the screen, it's actually more likely to happen from, I need to check this, from um, enemies moving off screen. Because you can go through a room fine with enemies moving off screen. Oh yeah, speed booster. We need this right up there, but there was one of the changes is you can now speed boost in more form. Which helps you get these items. So I never got back there. I spent like 20 minutes trying to get behind that one thing and it just... I don't know. I could break... I got the first block broke and then yeah, I couldn't get the second block after like 20 minutes. So that thing... If you can get that, good job. You're better at that than I am. So remember that Meridia room where we got power bombs? Hey, we're back. And there's a speed boosting up there. And I missed it. But yes, lag is often... You can go through a room just fine without lag. And then when you see one enemy on screen, the game can lag out considerably just because it runs fine with all these other enemies moving off screen. Oh yeah, and here's the other fish. I didn't show this off last time. All these little blacked out fish hiding underwater. They're just having a fun time. But when you get back to the enemy thing and lag, when you get one enemy that wasn't moving off screen on screen, then all of a sudden that could become too much for the game and then it starts lagging out. There ways you can try to combat that, like, obviously, try to have as few enemies move off screen as possible, only the necessary ones. Um, good enemy placement would help. And uh, sometimes it's, that's kind of hard because then you're putting enemies like right in front of doors or whatever. Which is a bad thing, because it's 
Oh yeah, there's a missile up here. But if you place an enemy's ring, actually I want to get this stuff. I can get sidetracked real easy. But if you're placing enemies right in front of doors, that's just bad because then you're just smacking the player in the face for no real reason. They that is one of my biggest issues with hacks sometimes is that there are loads of supers back here. So it says one super party, that's <laughs> Yes, that was a super party and a very bad pun, but it works. But getting hit in the face as soon as you go through a door, when you don't even have a chance to avoid it, it's just, that's just really annoying. And not good. So never do that. But in fiddling around with enemy placement and whatnot, you can find some things that might reduce lag or eliminate it completely from a room. So, it's just some ideas to try out. Try different things and test them out, see if it helps. I know there's something here. Oh yes, this is the other side of where we started out. No, oh, there you are. Um, right up here. There's actually a couple items. Yeah, that's a wonderful super. But this is where we first headed up to Morph Ball and whatnot. I'm just on the other side of the wall now. It's like power bomb walls, obviously. So you can get through, or you could take the little shortcut I did to get back here. And then... Another thing about this hack being easy, we are getting close to the final boss. Oh, and here's where you start to see his mechanical tile set usage stuff that he's really, really good with. Oh, hi there. Next, I want to see what I have here. But it's neat to see that little background thing moving like that. He's got some really neat effects later on in this room that we'll get to. I need to go back and destroy this guy because great doors. I like how the Metroids and Mocktroids stay in these tanks until Samus appears, and all of a sudden they can break through very easily. Uh, yeah, we still aren't quite there yet. We have to get further down past some locked doors and past that locked door in particular. Which we should be able to now. Good. And... Down here... stuff and then down here now I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but there's like a little black line that's popping up in the background look at this thing that black line has something to do with it this is very very clever use of tiling lava appears behind layer one but in front of layer two So he has those like vats of lava up there. It's really, really. It seems like a simple thing, but it's a really neat visual thing, visual effect. Sorry, I have to go up. But it's a really neat little visual thing that's no one else really does that. And so yeah, those. Lava things are quite impressive. And this is the final boss room. Now, speaking of easy, I have to go this way. This is Gold Terizo. You can get out up there 
but... I don't want to do that. Because I want to show this <laughs> thing off. You have wave beam. How exactly is he going to hit you through this wall? Seriously. <laughs> I mean, gold trees was already sort of nerfed or easier. And then there's this. Like how? There's no chance there. I mean, yeah. That's a bit goofy. It's like a lot bit goofy. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. I just wanted to show that off just because I thought it was silly. If you want to make Cold Tree to a challenge, don't have that in his room. Just FYI. And we get X-ray scope for that, which we really don't need. It's just there for all the items. Because really, after Gold Tree, so we are now set to finish this hack, and we are actually really close to the end game. I like how these tube things, whatever they are, change them after you defeated them. After the room state was changed, I guess. So now we actually have the... Pretty much just about the only puzzle in the hack. It's not really much of a puzzle, but... Anyway, getting up here, we can now... It's kind of what this part is. Now we can get back over here. Yay. And then for the sort of puzzle thing, you just have to jump up that. That is the puzzle-ish thing. And that door I want down here. Goodbye, creatures. And this is actually the quote-unquote landing site. Although it's more of an exit site in this hack. You have this massive room... And your ship is kind of broke down. It's got sparkly things or whatever. The electric enemy sparkle things at the bottom. Kind of makes it look like it's broke, but... It's a very interesting visual effect. If your ship were broke, that would actually work really well, but... The ship is not broke. Just walk across. You don't even have to get in it. Just walk across and... He could have set it up different, though. He could have set the state, the in-game state, so you could go in the ship and end it, but this works as well. Kind of saves you having to enter your ship, so. So yeah, that was Melancholia 4. Or IV. I don't, I'm not sure I'd want an IV of Melancholia, but. Yeah. Just about the biggest hack in the contest. It is the biggest hack in the contest. Uh, the first one I did took me over an hour and this one took 31 minutes. And I knew what I was doing. So yeah, it's a, it's a massive hack for the limits that were placed. A bit too easy and a bit too much of just putting items you need right in your way. Although he did use all the rooms, so there really wasn't m much he could do with that, so... I mean, like, if he even had ten more rooms, he could have made it, so... He had to backtrack a little, look around, figure out a puzzle or two to get an item in order to advance. That, I think, would have improved the hack some more. Because that was missing with this. It was pretty much, you can run straight through, and then when you did the loop for speed booster, you got back out to the shortcut where you could take right to the end. So, it w could have used a little bit more with the, um, a little bit more backtracking. It is Metroid, it's okay to backtrack. But, still, lots of items to collect. So you can see, I didn't collect everything. I wasn't even close. So there's still some more stuff for you to find in there. And it actually is one of the 
better hacks in the contest, I think, still. And even with however many there are, I believe... No, I don't even... I don't even know how many hacks there are, but... I have to count them up later. But even with all these hacks, this one still is not... It kind of actually is the most cookie cutter. Like what I was thinking the hacks would be like. This one's kind of most like what I was thinking they would be. But not quite. I mean, there's a ton of variety in these hacks, and that was really impressive and neat to see from everybody who really wasn't collaborating with each other to make sure they did something different. So that was pretty neat to see. And also thanks to Polo Phil for putting this contest together in the first place. It was fun. And at the end we can see my pathetic percentage. So yeah, all those items in 20 rooms. 100 items in 20 rooms, so that's about 5 items per room. Also, the landing site, you could take that one out, basically. So split times between the rest of the rooms. And gold through this room, I guess you could take that one out. And we got 71%. So again, thanks for watching. This was Super Metroid Melancholia. Uh, still got some more hacks to do, so we look forward to seeing those in the very near future. We'll see you for that.